everyone and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse today we're going to talk about bitcoin and we're going to be reconciling two models that use logarithmic regression if you guys like the content please subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up also check out the telegram channel which you can find a link to in the description below so bitcoin has been on an amazing journey since october we've been moving up relatively quickly now this model if you're not familiar with it is our logarithmic regression fit to quote unquote non-bubbled data of just Bitcoin. Okay, it's of only Bitcoin, nothing more. And what we've noticed before is that our peaks above the regression line tend to get closer to the regression line as time goes on. So we've noticed this before. Now. The interesting thing about this is, and before I before I finish that statement, I want to show this chart because everyone always asks me, hey, can you extend it out? This is the logarithmic regression fit to non-bubble data that takes us all the way out until 2040. Now, one thing you should note is that this regression fit is only fit to data through here, okay? You can see these red data points. I only fit it there, and then it did an amazing job of guiding the reaccumulation phase for Bitcoin before we started to blast back off again, okay? So the idea is every time at the end of the bear market at the bottom, you refit it, and then that fit does a really good job of projecting out the next accumulation phase, okay? So fitting it through here helped project out the next accumulation phase. At some point later on, maybe we're back in the regression ban at like 50K or something. Uh, and we can refit it again to help project out the next accumulation phase and so on and so on and so on. Now, this is what happens when you extend it out. So the first thing I should say is that I honestly doubt this would be valid past this market cycle because if you only fit the data to say these data points and these ones, it would have already predicted a million dollar Bitcoin. And only fitting it to this one, this one, and this region would have already predicted us much higher than we currently are or it would have predicted the accumulation phase to be to be higher than it actually was. So with that in mind, the validity of such a fit 20 years out is not is not going to be that high, I think. Um, and we'll have to refit it. But with that said, what if it followed it? Then if it did, you can see the fair value. Let's go through this. So the fair value by 2024 would be about 50K. The fair value by 2028 would be about 200k and and you can see that it would cross the million dollar mark by say 2033 or so now i think it'll be slightly delayed past that just because i've, I've done the exercise where you fit each each cycle and it does it kind of overestimates the reaccumulation phase of the following cycle um but with that said we can get a rough estimate i, I would sort of treat this later on as sort of an upper bound Going back to this chart, why is this chart important? Well, one of the things we've noticed is that the extension from the fair value at the peak diminishes with time, right? You can see that so far, a mathematical exercise can show us that our extension from our fair value is not as high every single market cycle peak, okay? And we can show this mathematically. So this is the chart that shows where the peaks are with respect to the regression band, okay? And the interesting thing about this is if you draw a line sort of connecting these three points up here, we're not that far away from it. Now, the first thing I should say is that I do not think that we are close to the end of the market cycle. And there's a chart I'm going to show you to, to sort of convey why I think that is. Uh, but what I'm attempting to do here is reconcile two models and talk about how this could still theoretically be respected and and have the other model hold as well. Also recognizing that all models are wrong, some are useful, it's always possible we break the model. Uh, but I do not, I, I would sincerely doubt that we would be able to go to say a thousand percent overvalued from the fair value because this would be a thousand percent. I don't think we're going to make it there. Uh, we could go above this line slightly. I mean, there's always going to be a, a little bit of wiggle room. Now, the first thing I should say is it looks closer than it is. It looks a lot closer than it is because, you know, at, right now it shows us at around, so this is a, remember, this is a log scale here. So this is 100, 200. Those, it shows us at about 
300. It, this is about a, a day old or so. So but it's, let's say about 300, 350% overvalued. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to be overvalued? Well, going back to the regression line, it just means according to this line here. And remember, we can go years being outside of the regression line. For instance, over here, we left the regression band at around, or we left the fair value at around $1,000 and did not return back to it until it was $3,100. So in the same manner, we left it in 2020 at around 10K, we might not return to the regression band for you know for several years and it could be at a, at a much higher multiple maybe we return to it when it's at 40k or 50k so it could be a long time before we return to it but it still i think is useful as a as just a simple mathematical exercise to see our extension from it and if you do that you get this line now like i said this looks closer than it is and you might say well it looks pretty darn close the reason is because this is a log scale okay so this is a hundred percent and then you have to do this major move here to go 200 then a smaller one for 300 and then 400 and 500 and so on and so forth. So if you look at it, this would be one, two, three, four, five. So to get to a 500% overvaluation from the fair value, well, we need to know what the fair value is. The fair value, according to the regression fit right now, is around $12,100. It's moving up each and every day, okay? If we just say round it to $12,000, uh, $12, then we know that an overvaluation of 500% is a 6x. You may say, well, isn't it a 5x? No, because 100% is 2x, 200% is 3x, therefore a 500% overvaluation would be 6x. So 6x from 12,000 is $72,000. So Bitcoin could go to $72,000 and still not break this macro trend line down. Okay, it could go to 72K and still not break it. So you might think that it looks close. And it, I mean, it's not that far away. If Bitcoin's at, you know, if, if since Bitcoin's at around 50K, to get to 72K or so, it just needs to go up another 50%, right? I mean, it's not, it's not that unheard of for, for Bitcoin to do something like that. If the last few months are any indication, since it started at 10K and now we're at 50K, it's already gone up 5X. So going up another 50% from here, is it, I mean, it's not a guarantee, but it's not out of the question, okay? So we could go to $72,000 tomorrow and still maintain the integrity of this somewhat dubious macro trend line down. Now, remember, the fair value is a monotonically increasing function. So, and by the way, the fair value right now is actually 12.1. So really it implies more closer to, uh, it could go to even 72.5K and still still maintain it. But remember, the regression line is a monotonically increasing function. So since it's going up every day, it, you know, it won't take that long before say the fair value is at 15K. And then if you're looking at a 5X potentially from, from 15K, you're looking, you're, you know, instead of looking at say $72,000, you're looking at, at, at say 70, um, uh, or sorry, it'd be, it'd be a 6X, so it'd be $90,000. I was thinking of 5X, it'd be a 6X. So 5X from, from 15K would be, would be 75K, but it would be a 6X because we said 500%. Therefore, a 6X from that level would be $90,000. And it would only take it a few months likely to get to a $15,000 fair value. And, it would, and then a $90,000 Bitcoin is on the cards. So the point is to say, as I've always said, time is on our side. Right? I mean, yes, Bitcoin is fairly extended right now. No one's going to be surprised if we do get a sizable correction. We've had many of them in the past. But at the end of the day, even with the idea of diminishing returns, even with the idea of extension from the regression band, we still have a ways to go. And as you guys know, I'm fairly conservative. Okay, so a lot of a lot of people are fairly, you know, they're 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 not conservative with their price predictions. I'm fairly conservative. So even with a conservative estimate, a $72,000 Bitcoin is still possible this week, potentially. I'm not saying it's going to go to 72,000, but if it did, it would still obey this model. So the next thing I wanna look at though is, um, by the way, what, one of the things like, let's look at three different scenarios. Let's look at a bearish scenario, right? A bearish scenario would be if it, if it instantly corrects back down and then trends up later, because I mean, I think, no matter who you really consult about Bitcoin, well, except for maybe a few people, uh, most people would, would agree that 
a six-figure Bitcoin is on the cards this market cycle, right? I think Bitcoin will go to between one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars this market cycle. That's generally my thinking. Um, so whether it does it later on or sooner is is obviously up for discussion. A bearish scenario would be even if it does come back down, it still is likely going to trend up later. We have a lot of models that show why a six-figure Bitcoin is theoretically possible this market cycle. A more bullish scenario would be if it trends up to say 80k over the next few weeks, and then and then has a nice correction, and then we sort of trend up later on and go to a, a much higher valuation. And then you can also look at at a sort of some other random uh, random you know what if we what if we go up to 100k in the short term and then dip back down to 50k and then trend even higher in 2022 or, or something like that. So we have different you know different scenarios here, obviously. We don't, we, don't, we don't exactly know which one's going to play out. Um, right now, if we continue this pace, the pace that we're on, it would only take a few more months to reach 100K. Okay, so it's not, if, if Bitcoin continues this move, it would not take that much longer for it to reach $100,000. That's always a possibility. Um, we'll take it one step at a time. Now, what are we talking about when we say reconciling two models? Well, there's this model. And this is the model. This is the reason why I still feel like the market cycle has a ways to go. Now, if we were to go up to 7 trillion or 8 trillion total cryptocurrency market capitalization in the next few months, and I would say, all right, maybe it's time to run for the hills. But the, the total market capitalization right now, or as of, of, as of March 1st, is probably a little bit higher now, was approximately 1.5 trillion. And this chart shows that while we might not reach the green line because you know this one was well above it this one was closer this one touched it we still would probably come fairly close to it and so i would say that the the entire market capitalization of crypto would need to go up probably another four to six trillion dollars in the short term for me to consider this to be the, the market cycle peak could always have a local peak but i do not consider us to be anywhere close to a market cycle peak yet, because I, I still feel like this model shows we still have a few more trillion to go, right? What's a few trillion among friends? But I, I do think we still have a few trillion to go, upwards of say six trillion, seven trillion, somewhere in that ballpark. But time is on our side. The longer it takes us to get up here, the th I think higher the higher we can ultimately fly. So if we do it immediately, we probably wouldn't go up as high as we could if we cooled down for a while and went up in later 2021 which is probably not as high if we cooled down even longer and went up in say 2022. So time is on our side. For instance, I think the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization could reach $10 trillion you know, sometime this market cycle, but it probably would not happen immediately. Um, you know, Give it a little bit of time to get there. And I, I, so that's why I always say time is on our side. So we look at this model and we say, well, could we not do the same ex a, a sort of dubious uh, percent difference between the market cap and the fair value. The, the reason this model is different from the other one is because, first of all, the red line is fit to all data. It's not just the non-bubble data, which is somewhat discretionary. The second reason is the total cryptocurrency market cap. So it also includes other things besides Bitcoin. And this is why I don't think the market cycle is anywhere close to being over. Um, if you look at the same type of of mathematical exercise, you can see that we still have a ways to go to get to a theoretical market cycle top. A long ways to go. We're currently at around 250%, which by the way has been shifted by 100%. So 100% is an ROI of one, or sorry, it, it means that the fair value and the market cap are the same. So a 200% actually in this area, in, in this scenario is actually 100%. Right now we're just at 250, and you can see that we could we could be going upwards of 900% from the fair value. So I do not think the entire market cap as a whole is anywhere close to a, a market cycle peak. But as we've always said, we could always have a local top before having another major run up later on. For instance, we could have a local top like we did in 2013. And then we had another major run up. And by the way, this market cycle emulates two market cycles ago a lot more than last market cycle so far. And if you don't know what I mean, you know, if you just look at this chart and you see, okay, we went down to the green, the undervaluation, and then back up. This one, down to the green, to the undervaluation, back up, down even lower, down even lower, peaked our head back above it, peaked our head back above it, a final capitulation, a final capitulation, and blast off. So far, this cycle is completely emulating two cycles ago. 
And if it does continue to emulate it, then maybe we have a nice blow off top, local top, we calm down for a while and then we trend higher. I don't think we're gonna see an 80% correction like this one was. I believe this one was an 80% correction for Bitcoin, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I do think there, you know, there could be a sizable correction and I don't think that that sizable correction would be the market cycle top. That's why I say time is on our side. Time is on our side. So we look back at the regression line and you might say, well, this looks different. Well, it's the same thing actually. It's on a logarithmic scale. So it's the same thing as the one we showed over here, but it's on a log log scale. You can see that we've had little, not little, but you know, somewhat significant bubbles before the final peak of the cycle. Smaller bubbles before the final peak. This was a major bubble and it still wasn't the peak. So we had two here before the major peak. We had three here, arguably, before the major peak. This one, we didn't really have any unless you want to include these ones, but these, these were only 40% correction. So the market structure of the last cycle was a lot more, it was a lot smoother. It was just a, a nice methodical move back up, a nice parabolic move up. The ones before were sort of these parabolic moves followed by a cooldown phase, a parabolic move and a cooldown phase and another major parabolic move with another cooldown phase and one final parabolic move. So far, this cycle, we had a parabolic move in 2019. We're having a significant parabolic move in 2021 and 2020. So this is something we will want to keep an eye on and that if it does come down, it doesn't mean it's the end of the cycle. It just could be a local top. So when we took when we look back at this chart and we say, well, the extension here could put us theoretically, we could maintain the integrity of this line and still go to $72,000 in the short term. Imagine a scenario where we do go to $72,000 doesn't mean it's the market cycle peak, um, especially considering this chart. And this is why I say having several different charts, I think is ideal because we know that all models are wrong, but if we have enough charts to sort of interpret what's going on with the entire asset class, it can be a better guide. Uh, and first, another thing too, is there's no guarantee we go to this line in the short term, right? We haven't actually made it there yet. So there's no guarantee we go to 72K in the short term. We could, by the way, if it takes us a month to get there, it would probably need to be a 74K or something, because remember, the fair value will continue to increase each and every day. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully we've, we've sort of discussed these different models. Obviously there's always a chance that these sort of macro trend lines break. There's not gonna be an exact, it's not gonna be an exact match, but I do think it will give us a, a fairly decent guess as to where things could be getting overextended before we get a sizable pullback. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel. Let's go for 200,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember, we have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. You can also find a link to the altcoin season sale in the description below. You'll get access to weekly reports, weekly videos, a Telegram alerts channel, a Telegram chat room, a risk dashboard, weekly premium videos and weekly newsletters and more. Make sure you guys check it out. You can lock in the lower rate, the lower monthly rate, as long as you don't cancel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, turn on the, click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Like the video. I'll see you next time. Bye.